been working on your bike and you need to install the fuel tank just to get it running or to tune it, well today we're going to build an auxiliary fuel cell to help with that problem. Well all we need to uh, build our auxiliary fuel tank is a few simple items. Uh, one of these aluminum uh, water bottles, which I actually got for free, it was a premium from a realty company. Uh, a couple of different fittings, a, uh, a shutoff valve of some sort, I chose one with threads and I'll use two fittings. Um, you'll need something so you can attach, uh, a ho have a hose barb so you can attach your hose when you're done. And then, depending on how you want to uh, attach it, I'm going to use a two-part epoxy. I chose the one that has the plungers and the mixing tips just to simplify things. You could use uh, any of the other two parts where you mix it uh, after squirting it out yourself. So this is all you need. Should be uh, about ten dollars for everything. That that would be including if you had to purchase this, because these can be had for about two to four dollars. Uh, so let's get started. Okay. Well, depending on the type of fitting and how you're going to actually attach your valve to the bottom of the canister, uh, will determine uh, how big a hole or what you uh, how big a hole you need to drill. I'm going to use one of these step drills just because this is real thin. It'll be real easy. I'm using a fitting such as this uh, that will screw onto my shutoff valve, and then this is actually a uh, reducer. And I chose this style because it has a lot of surface area because we're going to run our epoxy and it'll uh, make a good tight bond. However, you could uh, use, you know, just thread this in and epoxy it in, but that might not be as durable as using this style. That, so that's my thing. There's no wrong way to do this. You could, depending on the vessel you use, if it has a thick enough bottom, you could just drill and tap for a shut off or whatever fitting you choose to use. So. I'm ready to drill my hole. There we have it. Our fitting fits in. We'll just get some epoxy going, put a bead of it in there, put it in there, and uh, let the epoxy set up, and then we're ready to put it together. Well, now that our epoxy is set up, we can just screw our uh, screw our valve in. And we'll want to tighten it down afterwards. And uh, now all we got to do is screw on our appropriate fitting. And uh, you know, you may want to Teflon tape these uh, because you could buy different fittings for different barb sizes. In case you wanted to use this on something else or or hook it up a different way. But uh, this is just one way to build something like this out of uh, common parts you can find at the hardware store or you might even have this kind of stuff laying around. Now one thing to remember with, with this is, you know, fuel is not designed to be stored in this. <clears throat> so once you're done you want to dump all the fuel out and let it evaporate. One other thing I might notice note is you're going to need to drill a, um, a vent hole in your cap or somewhere up, up top. Um, later I might uh, put a little uh, vent uh, hose in or barb in my cap so I can stick like a uh, check valve like you'd find on the top of a gas cap on a motorcycle tank just so if this thing would happen to fall over it's not going to spill out the end where my vent hole is. But um, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple deal. You know, use your imagination. I mean this is just the idea I came up with but uh, you can make this out of different things. Motion Pro sells one that has a nice hanger on this. I use these because you can put a carabiner or just a piece of coat hanger and then hang it up on something to make uh, working on your bike, tuning it without the tank on a lot easier. And on some street bikes and ATVs that's a benefit because the carburetors are already hard to get to. This will make it a little bit easier because you can work on it without the body work or tank on there. So. Until next time, I'm the Junk Man, and thanks for watching.